We saw a Facebook post over the last uh, 24 hours about an incident that happened on uh, Friday last outside the uh, mosque in Blanchardstown and something that happened to um, one of our listeners. Her name is uh, Rose. Rose, welcome to 98FM. Hello. Now, thank you. Take me back to uh, Friday morning. What were you doing and where were you going? Um, I just went for a cycle. I was cycling on the, the footpath. I went around Mulhudert, um, like past the graveyard. And then I came down past the, the factories mm-hmm. and I was cycling towards, just past the IT college. And I was cycling towards Riversdale College. And in between the IT college and Riversdale College is a mosque. And there was like, it was too, it just happened so quick. There were so many people in front of me and I was ringing the bell. I was on a cycle path and I was saying, excuse me, excuse me. And you're ringing the bell on on your bike? On the bike and people, some people moved past and smiled and a lot of people, mostly men, they didn't move. They were the full width of the footpath and the cycle path. So I had nowhere to go and I was slowing down to get off the bike and the man turned around. He was in like his fifties. He was well dressed, and it just didn't seem the type of man to start shouting. And he he called me a stupid woman. This is the footpath, the footpath, and he kept fo- pointing to the cycle path. And I took out my earphones. I was listening to some music, and I said, "No, I'm sorry. This is a cycle path. I'm using the cycle path." And he just kept saying, "No, stupid woman. This is a footpath. Get off the footpath." I was just shocked and there were so many people like there were I can't even tell you how many people there was there they were just coming out in their droves Right and so yeah, basically this this guy in his 50s uh, shouted at you get off the footpath woman um, yeah. and you were trying to explain that it's actually a cycle lane a as cycle. well And you can see where the marks had faded but it is a cycle path Okay and, the, and this man then put his arm out and stopped you cycling past he put his two arms out and he had this look on his face. He was just annoyed. And I said, why are you doing this? And there was a young man with him in his 20s. He was dressed all in brown. And he started hitting his face and saying, white woman, white woman. And I said, yes, I am a white woman. What's that got to do with the psychopath? And the young man was laughing. And then it was only later on I remembered there's a lady behind him. I don't know if she was with them. But she was laughing and she looked at me and she laughed and I said, why would you think this is funny? Why would you think it's funny for a woman to be treated like this? And then I said, can I go, please? Can I use the path? So I started to cycle again. And the boy kept saying, the young man kept saying, stupid white woman. And he was tapping his face. And then the man in the fifth, in his 50s, he stepped aside and I thought he was letting me go. And just as I cycled, he just got his two arms and pushed me and knocked me flying. And I couldn't control the bike and all I could see was oncoming traffic because it's it's like a little embankment mm-hmm. and if you go over the embankment you're on the middle of the road so I was trying to stop the bike from going onto the middle of the road and I slid down and the bike came on top of me and I, I think I just burst into tears I don't I can't even remember half of so it so this guy basically shoved you off your bike pushed me and the bike on down the embankment and it's oncoming traffic then from the Blanchestown area. Wow, okay, so what happened, what happened with this group of men and perhaps one woman? Did they just disperse and leave you there? Well, I, I just remember lying on the, between the foot, the psychopath and the, the embankment. I was half on and half off. And I remember my sunglasses fell off and my headphones and they just stepped over them. Most of the people just kept walking where they were going towards Warrenstown. Castle Curra area, they were all heading in that area. And I rem- I didn't see it. I just remember these two men running over to me and then I saw their truck on the middle of the road, two lovely men from the council. Or I know the council lorry from going around the area. And they ran over and they helped me up. They Both of them lifted me up and lift the bike up for me. And then they're asking me, am I okay? They said, we saw what happened. That's disgraceful. We saw what the man did. And that one of the younger man, Dave, I think his name was, he was on the phone. He called 999 and asked for assistance. I'm not sure what he said to them, but he said, I've called the guards for you and an ambulance. And the other man, an older man, was with him, Bobby. 
and they held my hand and sat beside me. I can't even remember how long I was sitting there. I just remember crying. I couldn't stop crying. Now tell me about your injuries. You you, you were black and blue afterwards. Yeah, my legs. Because I was sliding, you see, and it's kind of all rocky and the bike came down on top of me. So my two knees were badly bruised and swollen. I kind of twisted my knee as I was trying to stop myself from falling down the embankment. Mm. But those two men were so kind and they stayed with me the whole time. But the and, police and, and, never and, came. And, the, sorry, the, the man who shoved you, the man, the young man who was slapping his face, yeah. um, it, they they just left, did they? They laughed. And, I just and, remember seeing them laughing and they walked off. And they and walked it, off. Wow. All the people around them walked off. But I have to say three other Muslim gentlemen came over to me and apologised for their behaviour and asked me, was I okay? One, ge- one gentleman said that he was a doctor. I th- I'm not sure if he said from Connolly Hospital. He didn't mention Connolly Hospital, but I was kind of in shock. And he was asking me, did I need assistance? But I can't. Re- I really can't remember half of it. I just remember those two men from the council were so kind and they stayed the whole time with me. From then, uh, from there, you went to um, uh, the guardie to report it. Um... Yeah, my husband brought me down the the, count, the young man from the council asked, did I want to use his phone to ring my husband? I rang my husband and he came flying down to me and he took me down to Blanchestown Police Station and we asked, could we speak to somebody privately because I was still upset. You could mm. see I'd been crying for so long. And the young guard said that there was nobody available to take the statement that they had prisoners in the cells. And somebody would contact me later on or could I call back tomorrow after 12 o'clock? But I, di- I didn't go back the next day. I was just so upset that nobody turned up and nobody was there to speak to me. Okay, so it's Monday now. Uh, this happened on Friday and you've still not given a statement or a guard. You haven't been in contact no. with you for a statement. No. Oh, now, yeah. I have to say, it, the, the whole story sounds extraordinarily intimidating for a, a, a group of man, a men to be uh, harassing a woman like that. Um, it's such a large group, though. I mean, they were coming... They're like I was in the middle of it, to me it felt like a hundred people and their cars were parked on the footpath there was cars parked on the on the grass verges there was cars everywhere and again the, 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 the path or the cycle path that you were on is a cycle path it is a cycle path everyone uses it it's a, definitely a cycle path and how it's are you a cycle path and a footpath and they're both beside each other how are you today? I'm still getting over the shock of it. Mm. And it's, every time I think of it now, I get angry. And if the guards had come when the, when that, when the chap from the council called them, maybe I could have got in the car and went with the guards and said, there's the two men who did this. But now it's too late. You'll probably exactly. never find out who they were. Exactly. We uh, went into the mosque. My husband brought me down to the mosque. And we went in and asked to speak to somebody in charge. And the gentleman that came out, I'm, I can't remember his name, but we were told that he's a neurologist, I think, from... Oh, yes, I know, I, yeah, I know the man, yeah. From Bowmount Hospital. Yep, yep, yep. And he apologised, and I said, what will happen if you find out who this person was? He said, we'll sit down and talk to him. Because it's not... And, I mean, the sad part about this is that, you know, hearing about incidents like that just tarnishes uh, the Muslim community with a bad name, which it doesn't we necessarily... We have lovely Muslim Yes, neighbors. and that's the point I was about to say. Yeah. Um, it just so happens you met a, a bogey bunch of men. Um, oh, and that's... Uh, it must have been really intimidating. Um, it my, was horrible. Yeah, my heart goes out All to I could see was oncoming traffic. Yeah. I honestly thought... And if it wasn't for those two men who ran over, the men from the council, I still have to thank them. I just never got around. He, he left his phone number with my husband. I never got around to thank them. Dave and Bobby, they were two lovely men. They stayed the whole time, but the guards didn't come and an ambulance didn't come. And it was Dr. Umar Al-Quadri that you were talking to uh, the other day. Is that right? I'm not the, sure of his yeah, name. The man from, Blair, from Beaumont Hospital. And yeah. I, I hope that he's able to find out who did that and uh, have, a, have a stern word with them. Um all I can say is I, I wish you the very best and I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that intimidating story from you, Rose. Thanks very much, Steve, for talking much. to us. All right, there no you go. No problem, thank you. And that's Rose. Wow, what a story. Um, anyway, uh, it, it shouldn't tarnish the whole Muslim community. It just so happens that it was a group of Muslim men. Anyway, this is 98FM's Dublin Talk.